How's it going guys, Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new Locals feature match. As I had mentioned in a previous feature match, I did say that I had some uh, Dragon Maid feature matches to get out to you guys. So now I'm finally uh, delivering on that. I do have a couple. I think this might be one of three. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but he's playing off against uh, a Goki uh, Phantom Knight deck. Mainly just, just Goki Warrior spam is what I would call it. Um, because obviously... With a sold still being around and some of that uh, the code breaker support and obviously the phantom knight stuff and with the help of the infernoble engine which i believe he is playing a small infernoble engine and uh, by the way i believe this profile was already posted on the channel and i know people sometimes ask about uh for profiles of uh decks that are, are featured in these feature matches and sometimes i'm able to get them for you um sometimes people that play these decks aren't always playing them the next week um, or, you know, after you guys ask uh, to see the profiles, I will try. Um, Dragon Maid profile might be a possibility. I don't want to make any promises, but that's something we could d definitely uh, try to get. Um, because uh, my friend here on the left does play quite a bit of Dragon Maid. I don't think my friend plays this uh, Goki deck anymore. But if you guys want to see the Goki profile, I believe it is already on the channel. So go ahead and check it out if you want. Just be Phantom Knight Goki deck profile should be all you have to search. So... Uh, through some assault shenanigans, we're going to see him link all the way up into that uh, Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. Going to go ahead and search off of what I believe is Octo Stretch. And that's going to be uh, summoning back out, or not, uh, ser searching rematch off of the Octo Stretch. If I didn't already say that, um, I'm, I'm, I may be losing my mind a little bit, but it is what it is. Um, so that is going to go into the Code Breaker link two and that's going to summon another code breaker monster uh from his deck um and that's a neat little engine uh that he, he plays in here it does have a, a, a one of the other code breaker monsters i believe has an effect uh where it can you know clear a bunch of sets uh set cards uh based on the number of links that it points to um something along the lines of that but it's a it's a pretty nice engine um, to see utilized again, I'm not too familiar with it, but as you can see here, reviving just two more Codebreaker monsters from the graveyard, um, just on that summon. So, I mean, that seems pretty good to me. Just a nice little link spam engine on top of everything else. So, works pretty well. And I did mention earlier, it does make use of uh, Infernoble cards. Like, uh, I think it's mainly just Fire Flint Lady and a copy of um, the Durendal to search said Fire Flint Lady or Super Quantum Red Lady or whatever it may be. Just for potential starters and extenders. Um, so all good synergy there. Going to go ahead and link now into the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. Going to go ahead and send a copy of the Cloak. And he's going to Shade Brigandine immediately to overlay with that level 4 Codebreaker monster into Abyss Dweller. Pretty good generic rank 4 Floodgate. Just making sure zones are all lined up here. And... Uh, using uh, a link cross here as well and uh, now we're going to see that boots hit the field after uh, cloak is banished and uh, we're going to link into verte anaconda um so that's well oh, and the, uh, the the link cross token is actually coming in handy here to be able to uh grab that link karibo back out from the grave obviously the tokens themselves cannot be used as link material but they are level one so can be helpful to get another dark monster on the field to be able to make help make Bardish. And then I'm going to go into the, obviously, Veritanaconda. You know, pay the 2k, send Red Eyes Fusion, and who else, uh, you know, would you expect to be summoned off this other than the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon? Um, to, you know, already add on top of this pretty solid board. Dragoon, Appaloosa with three materials, and an Abyss Dweller. Uh, and a Fog Blade set as well. Um... The thing too about the Goki engine is this is an engine that I was uh, considering playing in my Infernoble deck. You know, if Halki, Lane Cross, and Aurorodon were no longer options at some point, those uh, Goki engine cards can work pretty well. Uh, so we're going to see Chamber Dragon Maid get normal summon here. It is going to be met with a Fog Blade. The Chamber Dragon, Dragon Maid just uh, on summon adds a Dragon Maid spell or trap from the deck to the hand. Now it looks like we're going to go ahead and see the Dragon Maid changeover. Fusion summon a dragon fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. And that will be negated by Dragoon. And I think now he's going to activate Hospitality to summon a dragon made monster from hand or graveyard in defense position. Um, so he's going to be able to summon back Chamber Maid. And that's going to go ahead and dump the uh, Dragon Maid Ernest to the graveyard. The level 7, 2600 attack, 1600 defense. 
a lot of these dragon mate cards do have uh, the tag out like abilities to bounce some card that bounce themselves back to the hand um, to be able to summon the bigger versions of themselves now we're going to see the continuous dragon maid welcome all monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each dragon maid monster you control um so yeah it's a pretty nice attack buff here and he's going to need it actually um if you wanted to uh get over some of his monsters specifically i should say uh the anaconda but he's not actually going to be able to attack over as you'll see here in a moment um but he does attempt to attack with Ernest into that token he tags out for link karibo uh, and then Ernest is still able to get over it, but Link Reba is going to drop it to zero. Um, here he thinks he can get over the Anaconda, which, you know, on paper he technically could. It does have 700 now because of the welcome, but because Fogblade is on that Chamber Dragon Maid, um, it will not be able uh, to attack or be attacked also. Um, but he does have two Dragon-type monsters on the field, so we could see something like uh, Romulus or perhaps something like... Uh, the uh, Heavenly Spheres, which is very, very common in this deck, so I've seen. We're going to see uh, that um, the changeover be activated now. I think he searched it earlier, but now it's actually going to be activated, or was added back to his hand at some point. Um, yeah, so it is not a once-per-turn diffusion summon, so even if he did get it back at some other point, it doesn't matter. It's not a once-per-turn. The other effect of fusion is, though, this is able to summon the Dragon Maid uh, Shio, uh, which I believe is a bit of a, a nice interruption. Omni Negate. Um, but he does have Appaloosa and Dragoon uh, to be able to make sure that card does not resolve whatsoever. And we're going to head into a game two. So a, per a pretty commanding win there uh, for Goki against Dragon Maid. Uh, that's a very, very hard board to get through. Um, although he didn't lose to it immediately, it's just, you know, it's a, a slow descent. Uh, so we're going to head into game two, and I do want to mention a quick shout out to our sponsor over at Imperium Duelist. If you guys do want to help support me on my endeavors here on the channel, um, and you want to get some stuff out of it in the process, check out Imperium Duelist, guys. they got amazing playmats, sleeves, deck boxes, dice, binders, all this incredible stuff, and you can get it all for 10% off using my discount code WINNERKILLS10OFF. I've been using their stuff for years. It's all great stuff. Love it. Uh, and if you guys, again, want to support the channel and get something out of it in the process, check out Imperium Duel. Same thing by, you know, if you're shopping on TCG Player, do not forget to use my affiliate link down in the description below. If you guys use that link while you're buying anything on TCG Player, a small uh, portion of the revenue from your purchase will go right back into the channel, which, of course, helps out leaps and bounds. So, uh, Dragon Maid starting with not the most, uh, you know, productive turn. Looks like the... Uh, one dragon maid monster uh, foolishing the dragon, the kitchen dragon maid foolishing that uh, chamber maid to the graveyard, and uh, Rhoda being starting, uh, Rhoda starting things off here for our uh, Goki player, I'm going right into a sold, and uh, getting plenty of searches in the process here to add uh, some Goki monsters. A lot of the Goki monsters do things when they hit the grave to search other Goki cards out, but that secondary effect of a sold looks like it's going to be hit with a fatty imperm, and. Uh, I mean, the Phoenix Blade is in the grave at least, so, I mean, that's something. Uh, but now we're going to see uh, just a link right into Link Cross for two tokens. And it looks to me like that is going to do it for his turn. So that Assault being stopped, a key choke point to the strategy. We're going to see the, I believe, the, uh, what is it, the Nurse Dragon Maid reviving that Chamber Dragon Maid. Attempting to go ahead now and search a Dragon Maid spell or trap from the deck to the hand. We'll see what he grabs here. Go for either the Hospitality, the Welcome, or the Changeover. Uh, this is one of those situations where, uh, you know, capitalizing on this weak field uh, is probably going to be the best thing to do because you don't want him to be able to pop off and do full combo again because uh, it's probably not going to be broken. Um, you got to try to put that damage in an OTK while you can. Well, it's just a Link Cross, luck luckily, right now. And nothing else. A lot of cards in hand, though. So, pressure is definitely on. So, it looks like he's going to add Hospitality instead of Changeover. Hospitality does have the effect where it says, Special Summon a Dragon Maid monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position. Then you can send one Dragon Maid monster with the same attribute of a different level from your deck to the graveyard. Um, so that does set up your Dragon Maid monsters to be able to tag out because a lot of these uh, Dragon Maids, I believe most of them, if not all of them, uh, can return themselves to the hand, especially someone at level 7, 
Dragon Maid monster from hand or grave. Uh, I think summon, summon level 8 Dragon Maids. Um, so you want to make sure you send, uh, you know, the matching one if possible. Uh, so what we have here now is three Dragon Maids on board. And uh, he's going to go ahead and search that Ernest again. But we're going to see a Nibiru at that point. After Striker Dragon hits the field, he feels like there's been, you know, perhaps a bit too much advantage uh, to be gained. So he's like, you know what? We'll go ahead and throw the rock down right now. And there is a triple tactics talent to follow right up with that. It's like he knew he was going to do it all along. He had it set. And uh, now reaping the rewards here to be able to pot of greed essentially. Hopefully he can pick up some cards here to help him recover. Uh, wasn't the largest Nibiru in the world but definitely hurt a little bit. But it looks like he's found a copy of the World Legacy Guard Dragon, or maybe he's already had in his hand at this point, which is just bonus for him. There is the Nibiru token. Um, but that is going to allow him to reborn a dragon from the graveyard, I believe level 4 or lower. Uh, so we're going to see the Nurse Dragon made here. Nope, scratch that. Chamber Dragon made. And uh, I do apologize if I'm uh, not super quick on these effects. I'm actually having to look these up in real time because uh, I've actually never played against Dragon Maids myself. And I, my friend here on the left uh, has gone 4-0 like, the past few weeks at Locals with this deck. Um, it's very impressive. And I've, I feel like a big portion of that is the deck is pretty underrated. And it's also like you're going to have that surprise factor pretty much every time going into it. Because nobody knows, like me included, what any of the cards do. So we're going to see the Ernest activate, discard it to special summon a level 4 lower Dragon Maid from hand. Um, and that will get uh, what looks to be the Chamber Maid out. And we're going to see Elpy. And into a, I think the Rose Link Monster, I could be wrong. Uh, but it is going to give him a good arrow scheme here to take advantage with the Elpy. You won't need to put like Pisty out onto the field to be able to get both of those you know, arrow schemes, you know, two, uh, you know, zone where two arrows are pointing to. Like, similarly, we see with Dragon Link, where they have, like, the Romulus, and then uh, in each zone where the Romulus points, so you have both Pisty and Elpy, but taking advantage of that Rose Link monster, which I've actually never seen summoned before, which is pretty cool. Uh, and he was able to summon out the Parlor Dragon Maid, which is basically Foolish Burial uh, Goods, or just Foolish Burial, really, for any Dragon Maid card. And then we're going to see him just link into... Uh, the Heratic Spheres, so he's going to attempt to attack now the Heratic Spheres, obviously he would, to try to bait out that Compulse, plus a special summon. But he's going to go ahead and chain uh, the Parlor Dragon Maid to be able to bring out uh, the Tinkak. Tin Tinak, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not. Um, but that is actually going to now summon itself out. And then he's going to use Heratic Spheres to not actually bounce the Nibiru back to his hand, because that's not something necessarily you want to do, so why not... Uh, you know, get a Dragon Maid from the deck. Um, and, uh, you know, revive another Dragon Maid in the process. Get a search off Chamber Maid and bounce back your own World Legacy Guard Dragon. And then tag out into Ernest to put that Nurse Dragon Maid that you just summoned out from your, your deck right back into your hand. Because, yes, Spheres does uh, make the attack and defense zero the Dragon that you summoned from the extra deck. But it is not negated. So he basically... Went almost like, I want to say plus four on that interaction right there. Of him just attacking in uh, to that Spheres. All while not giving him that Nibiru back. So I do got to say that is a pretty nice play there. 100%. Uh, so here in main phase two, we're going to see Goki Super X attempt to activate. Which I believe is just going to search any Goki. Could be wrong. Or summon one from hand. Um, I'm unfamiliar myself with the Goki monsters. Uh, except for the, the two that I was playing for the time being in uh, Infernoble, which was just Goki, uh, Super X, and Octo Stretch. Um, basically, one searches out the other uh, when they hit the grave, and then the other searches out rematch when it hits the grave. So, we're going to see those searches come in here off those Goki monsters, and of course, the Assault search for the red layer. Um, I did have to speed this one up a little bit faster than usual, um, just because it was a longer duel, and actually did end up going into uh, into time. But we'll get to that, obviously, later. And uh, summoning out that Octo Stretch for one. And then we're going to see Headbat summon itself. And 
really seeing what the next move is going to be if he can if he can go for full combo here at this point props to him but obviously the biggest thing that he's lost this turn so far is the battle phase um because that's obviously the phase where you attack for game that's where uh, most games can be won um and so that nibiru also just sliding over his zone apparently um this is why you know having zoned play mats is pretty helpful sometimes for instances like this um so i mean it is what it is it's not the the biggest offense in the entire world these things happen uh, in long games, you know, uh, game states can get a little fuzzy. Obviously, they shouldn't, but it is what it is. I'm not there to police these matches 24-7. Obviously, I'm, I'm here playing in my matches as well. Um, so we're going to see that uh, Code Breaker engine here uh, start to activate. Some of the, uh, I think it's like Zero Day Code Breaker. I, I could be wrong. Um, I'll look it up real quick here. Code Breaker. Looking the stuff up on the spot. Super professional. Yeah, so we have Code Breaker Zero Day. I knew it had Zero Day in the name somewhere. Um, but he's going to attempt to activate that effect. And we're going to see that Forbidden Drippy Droppy to negate it. And uh, that is uh, pretty, pretty okay there. It's not the biggest play in the world. But it did force out a droplet um, that would have otherwise stopped this uh appaloosa and you know this verte anaconda as well but uh you have the code breaker virus berserker code breaker virus swordsman and then the code breaker zero day which is actually only three code breaker cards in the game and they all work pretty well here in the strategy so appaloosa with three negates uh and then we're gonna see the dragoon get summoned out off of that verte anaconda that's gonna blow up uh that dragon made monster there the one that i i can't even begin to pronounce um, but uh, he'll burn for that because Dragoon is a fair and balanced card, as we know. The Tinkak, so he will take uh, Tinkak, Tinkak. I think maybe that's it, not Tinkak, Kek W. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so he'll take 27 from that, which is quite a bit of damage to take. Parlor Dragon Maid's gonna get normal summon for no effect, thanks to Appaloosa. We're gonna see him follow up with Dragon Maid Hospitality. Will he burn the Negate here? So you can attempt to basically reborn a dragon main monster from the graveyard. Um, we'll see if it goes through. It will. So he's going to give him the body on board. I mean, he can't technically I mean, can't negate. I mean, he could use the Dragoon negate, but since at this point, two uh, Appaloosa negates have been exhausted. At this point, it would be per perhaps one of those situations where, you know, perhaps going into the battle phase would be tempting to try to run over this Appaloosa very early on. But all of his Dragon Maid monsters have very, very low attack. So that Nurse Dragon Maid is going to get negated on that uh, last effect there. Um, I think being a special summon from the grave off the Dragon Maid tidying. Says bash this card from your graveyard. Special summon a Dragon Maid monster from your hand or graveyard in defense. So obviously Parlor Dragon Maid can set up this like sort of low-key monster reborn in the grave. And obviously on top of that you have Hospitality. So much uh, reborn ability going on. And then he's going to go ahead and use that recycled World Legacy Guard Dragon to bring back the kitchen dragon maid here and uh just trying to see what he's got engraved now and at this point he just needs big dragon maid monsters that's all he needs um he's gonna be able to foolish uh a dragon maid monster um or yeah he's gonna go ahead and add a dragon maid monster from his deck to his hand except itself then send a dragon maid monster um and here also important to note he did use uh the tink heck uh to boost up his dragon maid lore par uh, to by 2,000 attack, um, and I think our Dragon Maid player did actually forget that the Dragon Maid Welcome was giving all of his monsters additional attack boost, so he's actually able to beat over this Dragoon for a thousand and not 700 like he thought, because it is gaining 300 attack from Welcome uh, since it was boosted up by 2,000 from Tink Hex Hand Effect, which is absolutely absurd. Boosted up by 2,000, um, and he's actually able to OTK right there. Um, he only had 2100 left when the last Dragon Maid was attacking in at, I think, 27 or 29 or 3k. Whatever it might have been. Over top of that, um, yeah, it was the Anaconda attacking over at, that, at 3k. So that meant 2500 damage. Uh, and he only had 2100 left. They must have had life points incorrectly or forgot about the attack boost from Dragon Maid Welcome. So I cut that game short. It only went on another turn. Um, and our, our unfortunate our Goki player was not able to recover. So we're going to head into game three here. I do apologize for that, but, um... I, I mean, I figured it's hard for me to keep going when life points are literally calculated to, to you know, have already spelled out game. Um, that, and it is what it is. He, the Dragon Maid player obviously still did end up winning, um, obviously because of all the advantage and, you know, being able to break that board 
being able to get over that Dragoon at 5,000 attack is also pretty impressive. And uh, not such a huge impressive turn here for our Dragon Maid player, um, but has a lot of graveyard set up. Um, the Dragon Maid Tidying is in the graveyard here. You've also got Heratic Spheres, which we've seen generates so much advantage for this deck. And it also acts as an interruption, which is pretty impressive. I'm, all, I'm, I'm currently just learning things about the deck myself as I watch over this and commentate it. Um, it's a very, very interesting strategy. I think a lot of people uh, really viewed Dragon Maids to be a very underrated deck. But, um, you know, this uh, my friend here proving to be, uh, you know, that this deck can do really impressive things. Especially since he's uh, gone like 4-0, I think three weeks in a row, as I mentioned earlier. So we're going to see Link Karibo hit the field here. Linking off that Octo Stretch, that's going to search the Goki rematch. Uh, basically, you know, his monster reborn in this deck. And we're going to see Appaloosa for three counters. Loves to go into that Appaloosa here. Oh, hopefully there isn't one in infinite impermanence lying awake. Although he does have a mid-breaker field. And now he's going to go ahead and play the rematch here. As you can see, uh, things are getting a little bit... Uh, quick here because time is being called um you know people playing frantically and yet there's time in the round the appaloosa is going to be able to be bounced in it because you know there is an imperm there um and they're just going to end up rolling for it um so i mean for the sake of the video we'll call it a draw you hate to see it but it is what it is a pretty impressive showing though by dragon maid and i think if that game were to have kept going uh you know uh you know, not being tied to a certain time limit or anything, uh, you know, it'd been a very, very interesting, um, you know, uh, game to see play out, but, uh, it is what it is, so, um, the time rules are the time rules, and, uh, you know, what are you gonna do? It's just, it, it's, it's business as usual in, in Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess, uh, the time rules being whatever, right? But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Leave a like if you did. More feature matches on the way. Uh, really going to try to be a bit more consistent here as uh, things move on. Um, things have been a bit hectic uh, outside of this, but uh, again, I do appreciate you guys' patience. Hope you guys have been enjoying all the videos, trying every day to be better than the last, and I do, of course, always appreciate all of your guys' support. And uh, yeah, as always, Winter Kill sign out. We'll see you guys in the next one. And last but not least, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members here on YouTube, Academic Thick, Zors, and Cadillacs84. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support the channel. It means a lot and it helps out a lot, believe me. So again, thank you guys so much for your continued support.